three, two, one. What what that thing Kevin Sam used to, <laughs> Kevin Sam used to do in the, in the beginning? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So this is how progressive ideology is making people undesirable. By think before you sleep. My name is Max, and I'm. 20, but not really, because I'm five. I... <laughs> I already don't like how this shit is starting. Uh, my name is Johnny, and I'm 31. This is my little corner. Ooh, Johnny needs to be put on the registry. The S-O registry. Here, here's some red flags off rip. Okay, first of all, they're both white. Um, he has gauges in his ear. I don't know, bro. Sometimes certain people just got that look to them, and you already know what type of people they are, bro. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to discriminate or be prejudiced, but everybody discriminates in this prejudice, so I'm sorry. But you, I mean, look at him. You can tell. And the little stuffed animals and shit. And the clothes they're wearing. Look at that fucking sweater. Bro, He he's the poster child for weirdos. Uh, my name is Johnny, and I'm 31. This is my little corner, and this is where I keep most of my stuffies and some other stuff. And this is my passy box. Did you say Papa? And this has Maybe all of Stranger my things? cards and stuff in it. And I have a lot of them. Yep, this is a real thing. That is a full-grown adult pretending to be a five-year-old. Mixed in with the staff at Truly trying to tell us that this is not unhealthy by calling it extreme love or love don't judge. Ooh, uh, no. flash. I'm judging. I'm tired of this era where they say don't judge people. Don't shame people. No, I'm judging and I'm shaming. Matter of fact, bring back shame. Hashtag bring back shame. That's my movement. I should, I, I should make a second channel called bring back shame. Because some people nowadays need to be shamed because they're taking shit too far. Okay? I'm not talking about shame for, you know, being different. Like, okay, let's say you're black and you like fucking country music. You like to go muddy or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about shaming people that do crazy, asinine things that should obviously be shamed, but they're trying to push it like it's regular. Everyone makes Damn. judgments. Assuming people would be judgmental of the relationship that you're displaying is a judgment. So even the morality police trying to shame you into not being judgmental can't refrain from being judgmental. Okay. Not that it really matters, because all of that shaming is just to trick you into ignoring the fact that engaging in behavior like what Max and Johnny are doing is not good for them and is actually being acted out as a way of avoiding their real life problems. For example, in the words what the fuck? of Peter Pan, I never want to grow up. Any responsible adult would freak out if they heard their kids saying this at 20, because people who work, pay bills, and make enough to survive without living off their boyfriend know that her mentality about not wanting to be an adult and take on responsibility is going to lead her to a very miserable life. Okay. Then imagine being a kid raised by this person. And yes, some kids have parents who are like this. But maybe I'm all wrong about this. Let's have Max explain it in her adult voice. DDLG, by definition, is Daddy Dom Little Girl. And it is a subsection of BDSM, which is a part of kink. I was just discovering things about- Don't kink shame. I'm shaming. That's weird. About the community, learning a bit more about it. I decided to um, try it out and I've just loved it ever since. It's just me. See, I explained it calmly and that means it's not unhealthy. It's an alternative lifestyle choice. We are just different. Uh, no. There's a reason why people look medicine. weird at a 20 year old who owns a full box of pacifiers and does stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go first? Let's get it off. Now I have a daddy baby day. Daddy baby day. Good jacket on. Also, I want to take my one. Like, I'm scared of the implications of this. Like, what are they doing when they're, um, you know, getting down to business? Like, what is she pretending to be? And why is a 31 year old man. Attracted to this. You know, if shame was still real, they would not have done this shit for the TV, boy. For BTV, I'm guessing this is a TV, not a YouTube channel. I don't know. 
I understand that she's still young, so she can get away with this stuff. You can drink, party, and waste time in your 20s engaging in addictive behaviors or highly stimulating behaviors without it being the end of the world. But there's something to be said about learning how to be socially desirable at a young age and refraining from behavior that most people would look at and say, that girl needs therapy. Because doing so will give you a huge advantage. A big problem with society today is that people are learning important skills at 25 that they should have learned at 15. Mm. What's going to happen if Max doesn't take care of her mental health is eventually she's going to be 35, life is going to smack her right in the face, and she's going to be a victim to whatever happens to her because she spent the last 15 years avoiding growing up. Mm -hmm. Now, I try to be empathetic, and I will say that if someone is acting like this as an adult, then they went through some stuff as a child. Probably. There's a reason why Max found DDLG desirable after seeing some videos on the internet. Over the years, I've listened to thousands of stories of people in pathological relationships. A lot of the time when you have a victim of severe abuse or tragedy, their development will arrest at a certain age. So if something bad happened at five, then you might get an adult with the voice of a five-year-old. There's a reason why Max chooses to roleplay at that age, and if she were to go to therapy- Y'all think they're gonna show her parents? I think they need to show her parents because this is kind of sick. That is the time period that she needs to discuss. Whatever happened to her, I'm sorry that she had to go through that. That being said, where I get a lot less empathetic is when media companies take these well-known signs that someone is acting out trauma instead of getting treatment and pretend that this is a normal, healthy behavior as a way of suggesting that more people should become like this. My, my daddy and I are very much in love and this is something that we do to strengthen that bond. This is what I mean. They're talking about how great the lifestyle is and how it empowers them without truly providing the psychological context that led to her desire for that kind of relationship. That is encouraging the behavior. There are a lot of people in the community that- Right, I think they're trying to be like unbiased by just showcasing it, but no, get to the bottom of it. Ask questions. It's okay to ask questions when shit don't make sense. Bro, I don't know what world we're living in where people can't tell the truth no more, but um, I don't like it. Do not a fan. Sexually, um, and I am not one of those people. This is a completely non-sexual lifestyle for me. I know a lot of people look down on more hardcore versions of the uh, DDLG subset, but for a lot of for a lot of people, it's non-sexual. It's and like for us, it's non. -sexual. I don't believe them at all. I don't believe them. if I was streaming, I'd say W or L. Do you believe them? Because I don't. I don't believe that shit at all. Well, it's certainly creepy that people do that. Also, I don't believe you. <laughs> I understand that you have to say that it's non-sexual for the camera, but I'm pretty sure that the vast majority of people would have trouble being intimate with a person who spends half the day pretending to be their daughter. There's a reason why this guy goes along with this role play. Um, I'm little when it's right to be, but of course it's it's not something that like I can't control like if we're out in public, you know I don't just randomly like shout daddy because that's involving other people in something that they didn't consent to That's she says that hold on, hold on. look how she says that in the very next clip This motherfuckers there's people behind them look There's people behind them She, there's a, an adult and I think two little kids behind them. Yeah, what the f I bet some disgruntled editor cut her contradicting herself by saying daddy as she role plays in a public park with kids in the background <laughs> right after she said she doesn't do that. I swear to God, I bro. honestly don't see how she could avoid doing this around children or other people who didn't consent to it if she's behaving like this in public. I don't believe she can fully control this behavior or certainly in the future she won't be able to because fetishes and strange behaviors like this are addictive and they progress over time and get more intense as the person seeks things that are more novel. I believe when it. someone is a new alcoholic and doesn't want other people to know, they will hide their alcohol stash like they are storing it in Fort Knox and they will never let people see how frequently they drink. As the years go on, that level of secrecy becomes inconvenient, they get less careful, and eventually they are just under the influence all the time surrounded by beer bottles. Even if Max doesn't do this now, if she doesn't get treatment, her role play will eventually progress to the point where she is not so careful to not impose on other people who didn't volunteer to be around it. I am an adult, I'm 20 years old. I pay my bills, I do my taxes. Um, it's, it's never interfered and I don't think that it will. I don't think she's paying her a therapy bill. 
I want to know what's wrong with this dude that he's going along with this, bro. I think he's 31 years old. Every day, we stray further from God. What the fuck? God yeah, damn. You're in your 20s and probably working unskilled labor. Come back and talk to me when you're ready for a real job and see how much not taking care of your mental health hurts you socially. It absolutely affects you because it is limiting the number of people who are willing to socially connect with you. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do this role play. America is a free country, sort of, and if they really <laughs> want to behave like this, that's fine, as long as they aren't causing harm to other people. But understand that role playing the avoidance of responsibility by saying things like, I never want to grow up, is going to make high quality people not want to be around you, and that will cause you to miss a ton of opportunity. Being socially desirable is important. It Caring is. Caring about what other people think about you is important. It is. Look at the millennial Not too much, but a, a, a fair amount of that, a normal amount of, you know, how you look, how you present yourself. How you present yourself is what's going to bring you to different opportunities and networking and meeting other people. You know what I'm saying? If you're single, you know how you present yourself is um, how you present yourself for men and women. It depends on how you on the quality of partner that you could attract or you're going to gain. You know what I mean? Generation. This doctrine of do whatever you want and don't care what people think was promoted during the childhoods of that generation. And now you have a bunch of people in their late 20s and early 30s who act like adult teenagers and can't get jobs because they wasted tons of vital years doing nonsense instead of focusing on things that will make people like them, which makes it very hard to network. Tons of people have no idea how nice it is to have good friends who actually have the ability to help you when you need it. Those kinds of people don't want to be around people who behave like children or adolescents. I will always have that childlike sense of wonder about me. And whether or not in 20 years... Bitch, and do something creative. What the fuck? Make some art. Draw. Why, why do you have to actually act like a five-year-old? That's what I don't understand. Oh, man, bro. I still call myself a little. I know that I'm going to have that inside me because... I just, I don't want to grow up. Again, you're 20. You have no idea what you're going to be like when you're 40. Hopefully you become much different. This kind of like pseudo starry-eyed mentality and not taking reality for what it is, is a sign that you aren't really developmentally where you should be at 20. This is what I would expect from a 13 year old. There are so many red flags here, including the fact that her boyfriend is 11 years older than her. Spoilers, relationships with a 10 plus year age gap don't really have a great track record when it comes to healthy behavior. This guy has over a decade of experience as an adult, while she is just barely out of high school. Of course, as you get older, age difference matters less, but these two are in a completely different place in life, and that is not good for creating a space where you can communicate on the same level and grow together. Anyway, the story continues as Truly promotes another couple as alternative. This is There's Danny, more? who engages in puppy play. Oh no, oh no. Oh no. I'm kind of mad I clicked this video, bro. Not to be honest with you. Hey, come on in. Come here. How was your walk? You want a treat? Yeah? You want a treat? Okay, I'll get you. <laughs> this is a sickness, man. Look at what these people do in America, man. I'm back up on the Wow! Uh oh! You treat. My name's Danny, and I'm a puppy girl just looking for head pats. My name is Jack, and I'm Danny's owner. You want something sweet? Good girl. Good girl. So, this is Danny who likes to play as a dog. Again, it's alternative and totally. It's like, it reminds me of, um,. That person that Trent, that Matt Walsh talked to in his documentary, what is a woman? Um, I identify as as a wolf, a werewolf, whatever the fuck that motherfucker said. And then nigga said, <laughs> nigga said, do you communicate with actual wolves? Uh, I think they said like safely or something. And he was like, can you demonstrate for us? Motherfucker said no. Why are you ashamed? Do it. She wasn't scared to do it on the camera. Why can't you do it on the camera? Totally not mentally unhealthy. This is a part of a series called Love Don't Judge. I'm judging. Which is an ironic title because in my experience, the people who constantly say don't judge 
are some of the most judgmental and intolerant people. If you've watched some of my other videos, then you'll know that during the Love Don't Judge segment, truly baits and pushes the people being interviewed to talk about how oppressed they are when they read comments that literally every creator gets. Even when the creators being interviewed aren't actually bothered by what's being said, or even when what's being said is not really a hate comment. Let's see the oppression that Danny faces. <laughs> While Jack was happy to get oppression, crazy. Get on board the puppy play boat. Many. I ain't gonna lie. If you do this, you deserve to be oppressed. The onlookers had other opinions about their captured and rehabilitated. Unusual relationship dynamic. We do get a lot of negative comments online. Jesus Christ, you need therapy. Uh, yes. Yeah, I would say that she needs therapy, judging by her actions. Full transparency though, there is a comment towards her about a dog pound that I cut out, but it was obviously a joke and I don't think she was that offended by it because she laughed at it. Also, welcome to content creation. Probably Dang, you said left it in, bruh. A good most of content creators need therapy. Addictive personalities are a part of what makes people successful in a super competitive environment, so it should be no shock that a large number of successful creators are addicts. Personally, for me, it's why I rarely drink and I don't do any recreational substances. I make sure that proclivity in me is focused on something productive and not something that's pathological. Yeah. So again, that statement that person made can be applied to most people who enter the public space. Same it's true. You know, it takes a certain type of person to be able to enter this type of arena and be successful at it and have all these eyes on you and all these mouths talking about you and all these ears listening for you and listening to you. It's a lot. It's a lot of pressure if you let it get to you. And if you're already not all the way there, phew, it's an easy way to crash and burn. You know, so, hey. Thing with negative comments. Every single creator big enough to have a comment section gets negative comments. I don't see why Truly needs to frame it as some special case when that comment is made towards Danny. With that said, let's go over why I think Danny needs therapy. Truly is exploiting these people instead of trying to help them. Therapy. Hashtag boycott. I've had chronic anxiety and panic attacks since I was a kid. Puppy play is this really great coping skill. That when I She's really cute though, no cat. Cute little white girl, or maybe Hispanic, I don't know. I've had a really stressful day. I can come home and just kind of lose myself in that puppy space and he'll take care of me. Chronic anxiety seems like a good reason to go to therapy. Panic attacks also seem like a good reason to go to therapy. To add to that, obviously I can't show this next thing and it's not said in the Truly video, but Danny is a sex worker with an OF account and I have never heard of someone choosing that field who was not a trauma survivor. Yet another reason to get treatments. Then she says that she's using puppy play as a coping mechanism. Well, you know- I hope she's not an OnlyFans talking about- <laughs> That'd be insane. <laughs> I heard my roommate hears me fucking barking. A lot of people think that drinking is a really good coping mechanism for anxiety or having a stressful day. And I'm making the comparison to addiction for a reason. Addiction is a continued uncontrollable behavior that is leading to negative consequences. One, you know she can't control it because she's using it as a coping mechanism and a way of regulating emotion. Using a drug of choice or a problematic behavior to regulate emotion is a key identifier of addiction. Also, like with Max, it will eventually progress to more extreme behavior. Two, yeah. it's going to have social consequences for her because people are going to see this behavior and not want to be around her. They can be like, oh, the you the girl that, uh, that barks like a dog? Phew. Acting like someone's dog. Dogs are children with no responsibility and cannot take care of themselves. An adult acting out this role and saying they don't want to shoulder responsibility makes them undesirable. Third, it's putting strain on her relationship with her boyfriend. We'll get to that. This is what I mean when I say this behavior is an uh -huh. addiction. You can also see that she's not taking care of her physical health. She was much healthier looking in the older photo of her. But more importantly, there are healthier- To be fair, I don't know if she looks healthier there. I think she might just be younger. That look like she young or something. But yeah, she's not the most fit girl though. My God, no cap, we can tell. There are ways to treat anxiety. The reason you get therapy is so things like anxiety don't constantly cause you to suffer and so you don't develop a pathological behavior to cope with your anxiety, which is what will happen when you don't have guidance. Also, here's where the relationship is- You know, I've, I've seen this dude's videos before. His voice is always so funny. Also, you never really know when you're gonna know when you're gonna know. You know what I mean? <laughs> he be spitting though, he be spitting though. I'm just playing, all of I'm just playing. He be spitting though. <laughs> but yeah, nigga voice. Being strained. 
Uh, when I first told Jack that I was into puppy play, it was really small and innocuous. I just said, hey, you should call me puppy yeah, as sure. like a pet name. And once he was fine with that, I kind of just spilled it like, okay, cool. I'm actually into puppy play. I like <laughs> acting like a puppy. You should buy look, me a bowl. Look, and look at his yeah. face. You saw his face? <laughs> <laughs> Help me. That's what he's saying. Look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. And wanting to be referred to as a puppy, which is a child, just like Max wanted to be referred to as a five year old. So it's similar behavior. But the fact that she had to hide it is a problem in itself. Now, I'm not saying that this is first date material, but this is something that she should have been upfront about very close to the start of the relationship. Her trying to ease him into it is dishonest behavior. It's like saying, once I've hooked you to the point where you'll feel guilty for leaving, I'm going to lay my personality disorder on you. Yeah, it was pretty like spontaneous kind of. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. You could just say, no, I'm not into that. And then you're going to see how she responds to that. But yeah. Yeah, no. This was not spontaneous. She hid this from you and likely profusely planned out every step for when she would tell you. She didn't just magically come up with it one day. This was on her mind from day one. I've never dated anyone that's been into puppy play before. Um, before she's definitely um, the first. Yeah, because she's I lie, that nigga. I think that boy got a little bit of soy in him. A little bit of, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, I'm not. Tricked you into it. I bet if she was more upfront about it at the start of the relationship, you would have said no to it. And it seems to be that way from my perspective, because when you look at their interactions, he doesn't appear to be all that into it. It's more like he's being used. That's whoa, 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 she got a tail on, oh my gosh. You know, I wonder, I wonder if in high school, if she was one of them kids that had that had walk around with the tail on, with little, the, fur, the furries. Maybe she's a furry for real. Ooh. If you one of the people that walked around with a tail on yourself when you was in, in high school, bro, Seek help. I'm rooting for you. Okay. There's a special message to you. Seek help. Seek guidance. Seek God. Allah. Good girl. Stay. Okay, get it. <laughs> Yo, bro. You would think she would have like practiced that trick before going on camera. But can you hear how his voice is flat and he's not really engaged? Even though he says he likes it at the end of the video, I don't believe him. His <laughs> affect and his facial expressions are all wrong. He looks like he is constantly putting on a forced smile. This is different from Johnny, the guy from the other video. He is clear. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny liked that shit. Johnny is sick. Johnny, Johnny. Really into that kink. But I've seen a lot of people interact with the actual dogs, and this is certainly the most unenthusiastic interaction I've seen from a pet owner getting their animal to do a trick. Probably because in his mind he is thinking, hey, can you stop pretending to be a dog for like five seconds so we can have an adult conversation? Also, who wants to be in this sort of relationship where it appears to be very one-sided? He's playing along with a dog thing and doing something that he seems like he doesn't want to do. So let me ask, what does she do in return for the inconvenience? Ultimately, the reason people develop these proclivities relates back to family history. The people involved have had a bunch of pathological relationships from their family of origin. Yep. Therefore, being in a relationship is scary, so they find ways to put up barriers to avoid real intimacy. It's them saying, I'm going to act like a dog or a five-year-old girl because real relationships are scary to me, and this is my way of avoiding them. Coping. I'm not your girlfriend, I'm your daughter. Or, I'm not your girlfriend, I'm your dog. There are all kinds of ways people avoid intimacy when they've ex D -O -G, not D -A -W -G. experienced bad childhoods. This is just a more extreme example. Like I said, do what you want, but what I don't like is them bringing this stuff into public spaces where kids can be involved. I mean, I love him so much. Yeah, He's I want kids my to see owner. This shit. He takes really good care of me and just makes my little puppy heart happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Oh my gosh, but I promise you she'd be barking when a nigga. Mm, mm. I promise you she'd be barking. When it's when it's time for that, when it's sexy time, I know she'd be... Ugh. These people may want to throw up, but... You know it's a common trend?
I ain't gonna say too much, but I know you see it. It's, it looks weird from the outside, but you know, I feel like there's a lot more to it. What we do works for us. This is what I don't like. I don't like the suggestion that this is just an alternative behavior, along with ignoring this series of mental health issues that come along with acting like this. Oh God. There's a reason it looks weird. It's a sign of poor mental health. It looks weird because what you it really is be asking weird. Is why don't you want to be who you actually are? Why doesn't Max want to behave like an adult? Why doesn't Danny want to behave like a human? These are the important mental health questions that need to be asked. We've gotten a lot of negative comments online. Things like, Ooh, what the fuck? you're an abomination to God, you need Jesus. What a fucking weirdo. You need to be put into a mental institute. That's not at all appropriate to bring kink out into public like that. Furries, furries, go away. Come again another day or never. <laughs> Yo. I agree. This is bestiality. This is disgusting. You still the you need a therapist. God is you need dead. Help. I You're make it a point this, huh? not to respond to any of those negative comments just because I know it's not worth it. Hands down, this is the most mentally healthy thing that Danny has said. I mean, if Danny, a no person cap. who has actual anxiety issues, can ignore negative comments, then I don't see why people like Taylor Lorenz have to go cry in a corner for a week because someone said they didn't like an article she wrote. I don't know who the hell that is, but if that's she doing, sheesh, brittle spirit. Bottom line, Word though, Dave Chappelle. is that this is not just some quirky alternative lifestyle. It's people who have been victims to likely some pretty bad stuff, and they're acting out these characters as a way of not dealing with their issues. Mm -hmm. Why can't I get a job? Why do things not go my way in life? This is why. People are constantly being pushed into being less desirable by big media companies and activists. Do you want to know why there are less and less good relationship partners out there? How about we look at the overweight and obesity statistics, which describes around 70% of America. Both men and women don't want overweight partners. Percent of adults aged 20 and over overweight, including obesity. 73.6%? Wait, hold on. So 73% in at least in 2017 and 2018... 73% of all adults in America were obese? No, no, no. Were overweight. 41% is obese. Okay. Psst, damn. Overweight. Ooh. Obese. Ooh. And obese is just from 2017 to 2020. Ooh. And you know, that's, that's March 2020. That's right before COVID, for lockdown, for the pandemic, the pandemic, as they say. Oh, Lord, I know that shit is even higher now. Damn. Oh, wait, I can't say that because it's been deemed hate speech. <laughs> then add on the fact that tons of people can't get good jobs. That's funny you say that because we were just watching a video on fat phobia. They were lied to about the efficacy of college, which in reality just ended up wasting four to six important years of their lives. Being completely broke in your mid-twenties and in tons of debt is not sexy. Then you have the massive promotion of sexual promiscuity by mainstream media, feminism, and the red pill, yep. which is another behavior that both men and women find undesirable. Where have all the good men gone? Where have all the good women gone? This is where they went. They got convinced to take on pathological behaviors instead of self-improving. Yeah. We've had decades of mainstream movements promoting behaviors that people find unattractive, and it's preventing us from getting along. Honestly, maybe that's the point. Because I've noticed that people who have no friends or good people around them are quite susceptible to tribalism. All it takes to- Because human beings in general want to feel accepted. We want to feel like part of the group. We want to have people that we can go to. That's why you see oftentimes people who are in a friend group and let's say they're not really, they're in a friend group and those people are not really their friends. Like they're the pushover of the group. They always like, you know, make fun of them all the time, but they leave them out all the time. Like they just, they have them do shit for them all the time. Like they're like the errand boy, the water boy. And they're just getting dragged along because they want to feel accepted. That's why a lot of people that are lonely, a lot of people that feel out, like outcasts. A lot of men right now, right? Men are very lonely right now. And so it's easy for them to get wrapped up in, you know, like being radicalized by like, you know, I don't even have any specific figureheads, but let's say, let's say like people like that one, this is one racist dude, but I don't remember his name. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I'm not gonna say Andrew Tate, but that's why it's easy for people to, to listen and 
follow along with Andrew Tate or Fresh and Fit or Kevin Samuels because they appeal to them because they're lonely and they be spitting facts. Now, I don't agree with everything, you know what I'm saying? But it gets them to the point where they would agree with everything that somebody says just just because they appeal to them. You know what I'm saying? They want to feel like part of the group. It's tough, bro. Wake up! That's what I'm trying to wake y'all up, man. I'm trying to make y'all realize. Trying to make y'all see the things that I see, bro. Because we we can all see them. We can all see the same things. We just open our eyes, bro. That's what I got. To screw people over for many years is a company like Truly saying, lean into your weirdness. You're just quirky. No, fix your mental health problem. Yeah. Go no, the... you're sick. Jim, eat healthy. Take care of your appearance. Learn how to detect social cues. Learn how to maintain good social boundaries. Start caring about people's needs and start helping them. When you get all this stuff right, people will magically start to like you. Like I said, oh, this God. is bad on both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> you have feminism saying, How dare you like a woman because she is beautiful and feminine? That's sexist. Then from the red pill side, you see guys saying, Women are so shallow, they never talked to me until I got muscles and started making more money. <laughs> How dare they like things that are attractive? <laughs> no, do what works. If you improved yourself and people responded well to that, then great. Stop getting resentful because people want to be around you. That's a great way to end up alone and miserable. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to say it again because this appears to be people's number one sticking point. Do what works. If something's not getting you what you want, Try stop something doing different. it. The people who are successful are able to quickly throw out things that don't benefit them and replace them with things that do. But that in order do. to do that, you, need to, to do that, you need to let go of let your go ego, let go of your hurt feelings, go your hurt feelings. And critically assess if what you're doing is actually leading you in the right direction. You will be shocked at how fast your life will improve when you start doing that. All right. Now he's spitting though. That was think before you sleep. Oh, I'm not even subscribed. I'm tripping. But yeah, that boy's spitting. Sheesh. Get out there and do better for yourself, man. Because, shit, this is the only life you got, boy. So try your best not to go put yourself through turmoil, bro. Like, honestly, bro. And if you're like one of these people that was in those videos, uh, whatever the name was, whatever the name was, go get help, please. Please get help. Please get help, please, because I don't want to see you outside the street. Because I see, if I see you outside the street, I'm gonna take matters into my own hands. What does that mean? Don't find out. I'm just playing. Nah, 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 nah. Get some help, bro.